the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We will hear these words once again in a little while when we read from 2 Corinthians. These words start every liturgy for a reason. It invokes the holy name of the Trinity, God, three in one. We believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, and we believe in Jesus Christ, God's Son, the Incarnated One, and we believe in the Holy Spirit. That is the Holy Trinity. Today is Trinity Sunday, the last high feast we will have for a while. It kickstarts the longest season of the Christian calendar, Ordinary Time. Today we have a very special guest with us. Our guest preacher is the Reverend Presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton. It's a very special day as we join thousands of other ELCA congregations throughout the world in listening to her preach the word together. So as we listen to our Presiding Bishop preach, I ask that we focus on the Trinity and that we also focus on the unity of our church. Blessed Trinity Sunday to you all, as we begin in the name in which we were baptized, one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray the prayer of the day. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the, the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. 
And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall, not, you shall have food from them. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands and have put all things under their feet, all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Our second reading comes from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. 
thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began, Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son, whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. Within God, and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the Spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. 
God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God as creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, inequity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country, but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship 
and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen. Gathered into the one body of Christ, let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Join me as we pray our prayers of intercession. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, Elizabeth and Lori, as well as pastors, deacons, and all the baptized in sharing your life-giving good news with all the world. Strengthen us to be bold in our proclamation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Inspire us to see waterways, plant life, birds, fish, insects, and mammals, and call them good. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage the leaders of this and every land to seek peace, equality, and unity. Instill wisdom in advocates who work toward justice in often ignored communities, like Chief Seattle, Reverend Jesse Jackson, our neighbors in Minneapolis. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of care, you created us in your image. Help us to see your likeness in one another. Open our eyes to see and attend to all who face oppression and suffering. Console, heal, and nourish all in need, especially 
all people of color, and those who are marginalized. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of care, be with all those who suffer from COVID-19, illness, and sickness in body, mind, or soul. We ask that you be with all those who cry out to you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of healing, you are with those who cry out to you. We pray for all who long for comfort. We pray especially for those in hospice, Kelly Heyer and Joan Anderson. Be with little Brianna and Aiden on their road to recovery. We pray for all those who mourn, for the Brewster family, the Turk family, and the Friel family, as well as Marge Olson on the passing of her aunt, Grace Miller. Be with the Johnsons as Rod heals. Be with John Carlson Jr. as he heals. Be with Ethel Daniels, Myrna Leaf, Lona Nordgren, her daughters Brenda Olson and Rhonda Burke. Be with Annie Slater's son, Charles Slater. And be with Dennis Formanak's brother, Jim. All these and other prayers we name in our hearts, O Lord, we lift up to you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints in, of all time and in our lives. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A few announcements. The newsletter is out in the mail. In it uh, is our COVID-19 response plan. So please read it carefully. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me or your council president. The remodeling at Pilgrim is going well, and it is looking wonderful. They have just added the floors, and the painting is finished. That is the recent report, so I will keep you updated as need be. The foot clinic will be resuming at Bethany at the end of this month. Please call Teresa Anderson for her available times, uh, and if you need her contact information, do contact Jane in the Bethany office. Please take the survey that has been sent out via email. Uh, it is very important for me to hear from you how we can best serve each other in this parish. Uh, the time is closing, is fast approaching when the survey will be closing, so please do uh, take uh, five minutes to complete the survey. All other announcements can be read in the newsletter, uh, so for now, please accept uh, the blessing from God. Go forth in the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who blesses you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. A quick reminder that the Sunday School link is attached to the description box of this video. Sing my tongue the glorious battle. Tell the triumph for and wide. Tell aloud the wondrous story of the cross the crucified. Tell how Christ the world's redeemed.
redeemer vanquished death the day he died god in mercy saw us fallen sunk in shame and misery felt to death in eden's garden where in pride we claimed the tree then another tree was chosen which the world from death would free tell how when at length the fullness of the appointed time was come christ the word was born of woman left for us the heavenly home blazed the path of true obedience shone as light amidst the gloom thirty years among us dwelling jesus went from nazareth destined dedicated willing did his work and met his death like a lamb he humbly yielded on the cross his dying breath bend your boughs o tree of glory sinews bend for a while the ancient rigor that your birth bestowed suspend and the lord of heavenly beauty gently on your arms extend faithful cross true sign of triumph before all the noblest tree none in foliage none in blossom none in fruit your equal be symbol of the world's redemption for your burden makes us free unto god be praise and glory to the father and the son to the eternal spirit honor now and evermore be done praise and glory in the highest while the timeless ages run Amen.